All right, so this handout that I've given out, let's see about applying some of these things on our site. So obviously, um, let's see, we can jump over to, in the writing section, we can start looking at number three and four and five. So what I want to do here is, okay, open up your web browser and let's go to wordpress.com. We spent the time last week to create a WordPress account. Uh, so go to wordpress.com and then sign in. This is the, uh, the login information that you created last time. So go to wordpress.com and click login. and add your email or username and password and go ahead and sign in. So as you sign in, WordPress.com again is the hosted solution. Uh, it's free, it runs on WordPress.com, it has the limitation of having WordPress.com appended to your file name. You can pay to, to remove that part and have your full name onto it, but I don't recommend paying the WordPress.com prices. I recommend going to Bluehost or HostMonster or GoDaddy or one of those and setting yourself up there. But anyway, when you, when you log in, you're going to see on the top left, we've got My Sites and Reader. WordPress.com is halfway between a blogging platform and a social network. Because you can look at other people's sites, blogs, you can follow them, you can make comments, you can like, and all of that, and yours can get likes and follows and everything. And so if you do follow a, a site here on your Reader, you'll see their latest blog post. But what we want to look at is on the top left, click on My Sites. And yours might be a little different than mine because I've got this set up, but do you see the name of your site there? And then all of these items, view, view site, admin, and all of that. Do you see that? So with WordPress.com, you can create an account just like we did, and actually you can have multiple multiple blogs. Notice I've got multiple listed right here with different addresses and so forth. And you can make as many as you want, as many WordPress.com blogs as you want for free with a different topic if you'd like. So for us that we've really only got the one, it should just, it should just mark, list here the name of your site. Here's a spot for statistics. So WordPress will tell you this. How many views or hits you've gotten? What were the most popular pages? The countries? What were the search terms? People typed in a search engine to find you. Refer is where did they come from? So this is what I was saying about you're going to get this data. You're going to see your backlinks. You're going to see uh, these analytics, that's a term for it, or statistics or insights, you're going to see this data um, of, of traffic and activity. The main thing you want to do when you log in and you switch over to my site is then click on WP Admin. Question. Under referrals there's uh, clicks. Mm -hmm. Is that if somebody clicks into your site or clicks out to your site? That's into your site. From into your somewhere site. else. Mm -hmm. If you click on that and view further detail, you'll see more detail. But yeah, those are clicks that people from some other site came to your site. So here, let's click on WP Admin on the left side, WP Admin. That takes us to the dashboard. We've seen this before. Uh, 
And again, you'll have to remind me, um, last time, did we look into very much in the settings screen? No. Yes, no? Just, just general? Okay. That sounds, we did all of them. Okay. Then, just a quick reminder, um, let's, we're not going to do some of these, yeah. Let's, uh, under settings, let's go over to reading. Scroll down and you'll see related posts. This is what I was saying on one of these items here about number 10. Under writing, number 10, read more. This is what I was saying. Um, we've got show related content after post or not. If you activate that, then it'll automatically then show other blog posts related to the current blog post people are reading. I would recommend leave that on because that's in my recommendations here. And I would also recommend to turn on this option, use a large and visually striking layout, which means it'll take a picture of from the post and add it to the read now, the related section. Because I sort of feel that without that, it kind of looks like ads, ads on the side of your screen and such. But if it's got the picture taken from a blog post that could catch people's attention enough to read the headline and then follow the link. So that's what I'm saying in number 10. On the post itself, set up a way for related posts to be visible. This is it. It's on by default, but I recommend use the large layout. At the bottom, remember to click Save, or this won't take effect. What's the difference between syndication feeds show the most recent and blog play? Pages show it Syndication is when someone subscribes to your blog and then they see a preview in an email or on their inbox. Oh, okay. So that's the syndication. And then the blog pages show it. Most of those are the pages that show on your site okay. at a time. look at one more setting here just to hammer it home. Uh, this one is over from the promoting section, uh, number one and number two. If we go here under settings to sharing, this publicize section, as we've said, this is the, the spot where you can link your blog to your social media because I said here, social for you. Share your content on your relevant social media channels. Share a link to your blog post on your personal LinkedIn, from the company Twitter, from your Instagram, for example. So here, this saves you some of that effort. If you connect your Facebook or your Google Plus or your Twitter, then whenever you publish a new post, it'll then, you'll have the option to then send it to those networks for more people to see it. That's share, social for you. Then social for them is this section here. This particular options are set up so that when someone reads my post, it will then have the ability to, for them to share on their Twitter or their Facebook or their Google+. If I also want Pinterest, I can drag it from available services and put it here. So now someone can pin it from my post easily like it on Facebook, share it on Google+, or reblog it. So those are the two I want to mention again about promoting. Oh, and one more we should do, comments, because again, like I'm saying, I, I don't know which way it'll go just yet, 
will comments become extinct? That will they become less relevant, or will the searches and search engines make them very relevant? The main thing is that we need to moderate our comments. So let's look at that, and that's under uh, that's under discussion. Under settings, go to discussion. And you want to turn on the option, and you scroll down, before a comment appears, comment must be manually approved. If it's not on, you want to turn that on. I recommend turn on comment must be manually approved, because that way will help you prevent spam. That way will help prevent people that are posting off-topic stuff. If my you know, if I have a website all about cats and someone's posting about their dog, it's not quite relevant on my site perhaps, so I might want to not show that on the site. Or if people are writing crazy things, same thing, I might not want to show that on my site, so I'm going to moderate it. If somebody's a troll, exactly. they're trolling you explicitly, trying to argue and make it a bit Exactly, so you can turn that on and the troll won't have a voice. And uh, don't worry about anyone crying about their free speech and all of that. This doesn't apply in this case because this is your property. This is your blog. It's just like a crazy person cannot stand on your lawn and yell at you. You have you can tell them, get off my lawn. They might go over to the sidewalk, but they're not going to be on your property. Same thing with this, po with this blog here. This is your blog, your property. You can choose to moderate comments, to not show any comments, to remove people's comments, it's your property. They can make their own blog and write whatever crazy thing directed to you. You can't stop that. That's free speech. But on your property, you have that ability. And I recommend turn that on and remember to save at the very bottom. Click save or it doesn't apply. We're going to adhere to, to, to some of these writing item, uh, some of these writing bullet points like number three and four and five right now, and number six, the other ones. We're going to adhere to them right now by going up to the posts menu, and let's select add new. I'm going to add a new post. Is there a way to um, post? Yes. We'll do it together, but if you want to, go to all posts, and then you will see the post. If you hover your mouse over it, you'll have a delete. Let's create a new post here, so hover, all, hover over posts and select add new. And then we get our canvas here to work with before we work on anything here. Let's go to the very top right corner where we've got screen options, the screen options tab. Click that. We have a bunch of options that are off by default. And you might not need some of these, but I'm going to mention some useful ones, such as excerpt. Turn on excerpt if it's not already on. That gives you a brand new box at the bottom. This is about crafting that 150 words that we were talking about. If we don't write an excerpt here, and it's off by default, then the search engine might take the first 150 words that it's or characters that it sees at the top of your post, and that might be that might be fine. And you might have written something at the beginning that works, but if you need to craft something a little bit more than than what your first paragraph says, it's in the excerpt. Notice it's hidden. So you want to turn on the screen options at the top here, and then turn on excerpt. Turn on discussion, and now you have a, a new little box at the very bottom where you can turn on or off per post allow comments. In our settings, we said that all of the whatever any comment that anyone writes, I have to moderate it. But maybe there's a post that you just don't want any comments on. You're going to put it out there. It's it's your opinion, it's the controversial one, you're just going to put it out there, no comments. You can turn that off, per post. So only this post will not have comments. Every other one you can have comments. 
And again, that's hidden. You have to turn it on up on the screen options. There's no good or bad about this, except for perhaps your sanity. If you're going to post something and people are going to troll you, well, turn off comments and you won't get those posts, those so comments. These are settings that we have to set for every post that we choose? The default back on that other screen was to turn them all on. So if you don't want comments on a particular post, you would turn them off this way. Yeah. This only applies for this one post. It doesn't override the main settings. Right. So if you say allow here, mm -hmm. it still is going to go. If somebody else comments on it, you still get to view it before it actually. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is still exactly. This is still going to go through the whole okay. moderation system. You're still going to get a notification of a new comment. You can approve, deny, or spam. Okay. If you don't allow, then they don't even get the opportunity to try. Exactly. Let's see, any other ones? Um, depending on uh, if you have ghost writers or guest writers or whatever, um, paid writers, you can also have author. If you turn on author, that's simply because um, you can create more than one user. You're the administrator, you can add three more authors, for example, with their own logins, so that they're not sharing your login. So let's say they log in with their credentials, so Janet logs in, and then uh, Janet writes something, and it's going to be published, but Janet is my ghostwriter. She's not going to be getting this, this credit this way. So under author, I can set, or she can set, that the person that wrote this was me. Obviously not everyone needs this, but if you are dealing with multiple authors and want to run it that way, it's under the author box and you can then change the author of the post. And the other ones are fine. Um, that's, the, that's the address of the particular post. It automatically sets itself, so we usually don't need to edit it. Do you need to see it? No, you leave that off. I'm leaving it off, but we'll see we'll we'll see it anyway in a spot here in a moment. Okay. That's kind of redundant, I think. And send tracks. Well, again, the ones I mentioned, I mentioned for a reason, and the ones I didn't, I didn't. Oh, okay. So we can talk about those. But uh, the ones that I recommended, we already talked about. Um, so here under under title is where we're we've got number three here. Try for a short, memorable, and direct title. Think of think in terms of content that people need and want to read. My review on the Toshiba T75, a winner. So you have one sentence here to write something. Also thinking about your keywords, your concepts about your site, what should you write here? So if this is Victor's Bakery, and I'm doing my Cupcake of the Month, I could write Cupcake of the Month. Um, chocolate chip. That could work, but here it would be more effective to mention what is the uniqueness of this post first. This is a part of a series. I want to have the cupcake of the month every month. That's not going to change. Cupcake of the month is not going to change. And that's taking up space on your search results. What would be better is the unique part. Chocolate chip cupcake of the month. So I'm writing it this way in that the unique subject of this particular post is first because then it'll show up first in the search results. And then the cupcake of the month part which is the serial part of my post. So depending on how you're writing yours, this works best because it's a series. But if you're writing how to cook a cupcake, or how to bake a cupcake, so that one, you know, that's, that's that I would use that sentence as is, how to, how to bake a cupcake. Or even better, how to cook, or uh, I would write maybe grandma's delicious cupcake recipe. In there I've loaded it up with more of those keywords and concepts. Grandma's delicious chocolate chip cupcake 
recipe. I'm hitting those keywords and concepts that my site is about, that I want to be famous for, uh, authoritative for. Um, cupcake, recipe, chocolate. I'm putting a little editorializing delicious so I can uh, steer the conversation if it was just simply grandma's chocolate chip recipe. Fine. But I'm already saying delicious. So I'm getting in people's minds an adjective. And then in this case, grandma. So I'm making an association there with um, with people and the warmth they have for their grandmother's recipes. So this kind of title here hits hits my points that I'm mentioning here. Memorable, direct. How to bake. Grandma's delicious chocolate chip cookie. Even better. Because that's perhaps what people would be searching for. Chocolate chip cookie recipe. Or how to bake chocolate chips. Maybe I don't need grandma's. Maybe I don't need delicious. There's lots of ways to do it, of course. I'm just thinking of concepts that might apply to you. How to bake chocolate chip how to bake chocolate chip cupcake a recipe. Famous chocolate chip cookie. Our top three chocolate chip cookie recipes. So I'm just thinking of a lot of possible titles. What is it that I want to write? How does it relate to my concept that I've defined? How will this relate to variety that I need to deal with month by month? This one is tying into one of my other points about lists, number seven. Your title might derive from the type of list you've written. So here I've got a top three. You could do a top 13. It doesn't matter the number. It's just that the point is that people like lists. Top this, top that, best this, worst that. Yes? If I was going to do tool of the month, do you have to put tool of the month? The Great Hammer. I mean, do you have to repeat that to reinforce the list? I would put uh, the Great Hammer first. Okay. That's the, again the specific part, like how I had it. You know, cookie uh, recipe of the month, chocolate chip. No, chocolate chip recipe of the month. That's the important part of that post. Again, adjectives. We all here are probably writers to different degrees. Adjectives, get out your thesaurus. So, um, most amazing San Diego bakeries. Tastiest San Diego recipes. Top 10 tastiest San Diego recipes, uh, bakeries. So uh, there's lots of ways we can write this. Again, think about being specific. Think about writing, um, you know, artistically with a lot of adjectives that relate. What sort of um, post are you writing? Is it going to be informational, instructional, opinionated? What's the most important part of what you're trying to write in this post? Use those keywords. So I'm going to write here, decadent chocolate chip cupcake of the month. Thank you.
<laughs> and then decadent puts you over the top. So go ahead and write something. This can, of course, be edited. And then click inside of the uh, editing area right here to start to write. And then, if it doesn't happen right away, it will. Then the slug appears. Did you notice that right below my title, something says permalink, and then it's got an address. The very end is highlighted in yellow. If you click Edit, that takes you back to edit that address. It took, WordPress is smart enough, that it, it took what I wrote and put it in the address. It, it created an address there. And it wrote it in already in an SEO-friendly way. It wrote each of those words and then with a dash. You can edit that, of course. That's the same as if we had gone up to Screen Options, Slug. We would have an extra box down here to edit it, which I don't think is that useful because I just use the one right on top here. You can edit that. I can I can uh, I can change it. Your title there doesn't have to be exactly what's in the address. So you can do this if you think about it for a moment. I've got decadent chocolate chip cupcake of the month. I can just change it to decadent chocolate chip cupcake. Maybe I've also got, you know, I, in this post. My concept is I'm going to be showing a picture of it, I'm going to be writing about it, I'm going to be giving away the recipe or a version of it. So my slug, my address here, I could write chocolate chip cupcake dash recipe. So this title, this address here, this slug, doesn't have to be exactly what your title is. And it, this will fill itself in automatically after you write something here. So sometimes what happens is you write this title you, you post it, you publish it, whatever, and it's not as effective, so then you change your title, but changing your title here does not change your slug. So they're not linked except the first time. When I wrote this right now, it wrote that exactly there. But later on, if I change this, this might not change. The title, if I change the title, the slug might not change. So you simply click on it and change it. And this is what I've done. I've changed the, the title here, the slug, a little bit so that it focuses again, even more distilled down to my keywords. Chocolate chip cupcake recipe, which is part of my Cupcake of the Month series. And it's decadent, so read it now. On the top right, let's click Save Draft, because it took us a while to craft the perfect title and slug. We should save that. Then we have the main editor. If it's not on already, you want to go and turn on the to toolbar toggle. The very last item there, toolbar toggle. So you get more options. Then what you want to do is we will we will look at um, oh, number ten. Read more on your blog page. Only include a snippet of the most, perhaps with an image, a snippet of the post, and the option for people to read more. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a little bit here, and then have a button to read more so that not the whole blog post appears. So I'm going to think what uh, eye-catching text within 150 words or so, uh, 150 letters, can I write here and then read more? So chocolate is one of our favorite Flavors. Cupcakes are one of our favorite desserts. 
we married the two. And this is the wonderful result. Decadent chocolate chip cupcake. So let's say I wrote something here. This is what will appear in the blog page. If someone is interested in this, they can further read. The way that they'll further read is, so write something, and then at the end of the line, do you see this icon here that looks kind of like a road with the, with the center divider line? That is the insert read more tag. So at the end of this sentence, if you click that, it adds this. And what that will look like once it's published is people will see the blog and they will see just that that I wrote on the blog. And then they'll have a button that says read more and they can continue to read the rest. Yes. Is there a word count? Yeah, it's right at the bottom right here. Oh, okay. okay. I'm sorry. Is that uh, no, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry, character. character. No, it's just words. Question. And is there a link or preview in the post? Yes, but not, not this read more part. That read more only works when you publish it. But if you want to preview how this looks right now, you can click the preview button on the top right, mm -hmm. and then that will show what you've written so far within the design of your, of your blog. And that will show what what we saved prior to this publishing. Yes. It'll show the whole thing. It won't show the read more. It'll show the whole thing as if they had clicked read more. Okay. So this is the uh, this is the snippet that appears before before uh, the whole post. Yeah, it doesn't give me a character count, unfortunately. But uh, there's that. That could be coupled with the excerpt. Can, can't you like, copy and paste that mm -hmm. into Microsoft? Yes, exactly. So it's not built into WordPress, but you can do that. You can use Word. Copy and paste it in there and have it do the count for you. What we could also do is this that we've written, we can copy that and paste it down here into the excerpt and that could be also fine-tuned. That can also be edited so that on the page of search results chocolate chip cookie, chocolate chip cupcake recipe. So here, make and share this very vanilla chocolate chip cupcake. Vanilla and chocolate from food.com. These crowd-pleasing cupcakes are quick, moist, and yummy. Paula Zire from Logan, Utah. Go bananas for fun, easy mix cupcakes partnered with chocolate chips. So that one gets cut off. They didn't really go in and craft it. It gets cut off. What What's the end? If you have only one pan and a recipe calls for more cupcakes, then your pan will... Well, again, they didn't take a moment to really write something effective there. The reason I might also put the same thing here is... Um, after I write this and then I go to the next line and start writing, the search engine might want to take all of this and ignore the more, and then it'll cut off, because now I'm past the 150. When you go past 150, then it cuts off the last whole word. So the more works basically just on your site. The more will work on a search result. So that's why I would also put it down here, because we're telling you, this is the excerpt. Use this. Don't look at anything else.
Let's save. We'll talk about these other ones in just a moment. Let's take uh, one more break, a little bit earlier, perhaps. But uh, let's take one more break, 10 minutes. When we come back, we'll, uh, we'll keep applying some of these items here.